right, good evening. Um, it is March, and uh, typically March uh, marks the, uh, the start of severe weather season. So tonight, uh, we are privileged to have Phil Baker, KC5UNU, with the National Weather Service, that's going to talk to us about uh, storm spotting. Okay. All right, thanks, John. Like Little Rock, they kind of have the 
you know, uh, Arkansas Emergency Management Agency right there in the backyard. So they, you know, we have to, well, we deal a lot with West Kena and, and, and Nina, and there's a, we've got a new warning coordination meteorologist, Todd Bill. Uh, some of you may remember Gary Woodall. He retired. Uh, he's now a, back in Texas. He's originally from there, so he retired in the Fort Worth area. Really big into astronomy, and he's always posting pictures of the, his photos, his uh, galaxies, and, and things like that on Facebook. So he's really into that. Um, Todd Deal is our new warning coordination meteorologist. He started out in Memphis back right around shortly after year 2000 as, a, as an intern, and he's from the Memphis area. So he knows this area and he understands it. Uh, he would probably be here tonight, but he's in Kansas City going through a two week warning coordination meteorologist uh, training. So he comes to us uh, from, he's kind of did a tour of Texas working at, uh, most recently, at the National Weather Service Southern Region Headquarters. So he kind of got into the headquarters part there for a little bit, got to deal with a lot of emergency management agencies, state and federal, now he's come back out to Memphis. And my guess is, my feeling is he's probably going to finish his career here. So we're looking forward uh, to having Todd here. And it's good to have a, a warning coordination meteorologist. It seems like when the federal government this is someone's retirement, Seems like we have to wait a lot longer than we used to to get the replacements back. So, uh, very good to have Todd back with us. So, why do we do that at the uh, National Weather Service down at the address? This will be reviewed for most people. But we issue warnings for tornadoes, severe thunderstorms, flooding, not too many hurricane warnings there. Usually they dissipate by the time they get up there. We've issued, you know, high wind warnings with, with hurricanes and and certainly flash flood warnings with those. Um, fire weather, we've had a few red flag warnings uh, since I've been here. I was told when I got there in 2006 that we don't get much fire weather. We actually do. Um, and high wind, uh, that should bring pretty familiar to us here uh, recently. And of course, winter weather. So our mission is the protection of life and property. And so how do we sense this weather. I mean, we've got the, the fancy Doppler radar that they're continuing to upgrade. Um, we've got satellites that have been upgraded, but only spotters can supplement that data with real data, ground truth data. So a lot of us don't realize, even some meteorologists don't realize, that when the radar sees that circulation, you've seen that, uh, that red and green couplet close to each other on the radar. That's not the tornado. That is actually the mesocyclone that's up here at the top of the clouds. See where that, that beam is? That tornado is usually, that circulation is going to be smaller than the length of a football field. And that radar beam depends on the range, depending on the range from the, the radar, it could be a mile wide. So something as small as the tornadic circulation is going to get lost. It's going to get averaged out inside that inside that radar beam. The beam is also up high, so we need spotters to give us that ground truth. So that's the, that's the critical role that spotters play. Now it's just not spotting tornadoes. We'll, we'll look at some more examples here. We're in that yellow arrow about this team effort. I'm sorry, I apologize. I don't, I'm not a fan of the animation, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it all up here. National Weather Service here, as I mentioned, we issue the, the watches and the warnings. We coordinate with the, the EMs and the media. And we want to get our message out to the public. That's who, that's who we're serving. That's who we're tasked to serve is the public. The spotter gives that ground truth to supplement the, the radar, the satellite, and the model data that we have. But how do we get spotters? How do spotters communicate with the National Weather Service? It's not just, not just ham radio. Ham radio happens to be a very efficient way to do that. And there's, there's sometimes there's, there's uh, you know, God forbid we have an earthquake here in the Mid-South and we lose communications, we lose internet, we'll still have ham radio. As long as we have a generator, people can put antennas up, ham radio will get out. So we're, we're gonna concentrate, I'm gonna concentrate on this yellow arrow here 
even though this is a ham radio community here, if you don't have ham radio or if you have family members that are not licensed ham radio operators, they can still be spotters. And that term spotters is kind of nebulous too. It's like, does that mean I gotta get in my car and I gotta go drive it out to some corner somewhere in a field and look at storms and hang out there for an hour and a half until the warning's over and the watch is over? That's not what that, that's not what we're looking for. Unfortunately, in the Mid-South, we don't have the best spotting conditions. We've got a lot of things working against us. And I, like I said before, I, I come from Nebraska. Up there, it's pretty flat. There's not as many trees. We get a lot of storms in the late afternoon and early evening in those long summer days. Sun sets up there around 9, 9, 15 p.m. And you can see forever, and you can see those thunderstorms, you can see those tornadoes. <coughs> you may have to drive outside of town a little bit to see them, but you can see them. Usually there's eyes on them. Here in the Mid-South, we've got it a little bit more difficult. A lot of times those storms that form over the plains, over Texarkana, Fort Smith, they get into the Mid-South here, 11 p.m., 1 a.m., 3 a.m. And even if it was light out, a lot of times we have really high humidity which results in really low cloud bases we've got trees we've got hills you're not going to see a tornado more than likely it may be rain wrapped even if you could see it so we have really difficult spotting conditions here in the mid-south we also have urban flooding here in the memphis area here and down trees and power lines all of us are familiar with these hazards so what i want to stress here is we're not we're not looking for people to get in their car and leave their homes and go out and look. But if we could get some reports of, hey, I've got, uh, I've got a tree that fell down in my neighbor's yard. It looks like it's about six inches in diameter. We'd like to hear about that. If you talk to your neighbor the next morning and he just mentioned something to you, that, that'd be information that we'd be interested in. Um, if there's a power line down on your way to work, maybe on a maybe on a midnight shift at the hospital or something like that. That'd be good to hear about. You don't have to use ham radio to do that, of course. Uh, there may not be a net or anything like that, but uh, I'll show you a way here uh, pretty soon that you could just go ahead and pass that information on. So our, our goal is to get that ground truth of storm information that kind of helps supplement our warnings. And if it's the next day, we still want to know about it because that kind of helps us verify and calibrate our warning strategy. So if we put out a warning and we don't get any reports back, technically, if you look at the statistics uh, that we're judged by, that warning was a uh, false alarm. So a lot of times we'll put warnings out for Phillips County, Arkansas, and it's just a, it's a cotton field. But if you got a storm that's probably put down at all full size hill or larger, we're not going to not put a warning on for that area. But here in Memphis, we want to know about that. That kind of helps us know what we see on radar. It helps us calibrate with what, uh, what we're warning for. So again, I want to stress, we're not, we're not looking for people to get in their cars and leave their houses. That's very, very important that, that we all uh, take, that, take that home with us. Personal safety always takes precedence. If it's hailing outside, we do not want you to step outside, run up quickly with a notebook over your head and grab a hailstone. Wait for it to completely get past and be done with. Then get that hailstone. If it looks like it might be a nickel, then take a picture with your cell phone and, and send it to us. We'd, we'd love to hear about that. So many of you know that we do have a a DMR amateur radio talk group. Uh, it's on the Brandmeister Network. It's uh, talk group 31471. How many here are familiar with DMR? Digital mobile radio, okay? Uh, DMR, I, this is, a lot of this is my opinion, so I'm not speaking for the Weather Service on, on this. DMR works great for what it does with respect to reporting storm, storm information. Um, I'll go through some of the advantages here a little bit. Um, it's reliable. Um, it lets us get information, uh, spotters, and radio operators checking in from remote areas or a 55 county warning area. 
for that, it is really good. I'm not sure personally if I'd want to use it for ham radio as much. Um, it starts out, started out as a commercial radio standard, so I'm not particularly keen on that, but for just an information sharing technology, it works pretty well. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, thanks to a lot of hard work by uh, Michael Knight, KK4IOH. He's worked to link up uh, All Star Link analog uh, VHF and uh, UHF uh, repeaters around the area to this talk group. So you do not have to have a DMR radio to participate in our Skyborn uh, talk group. So like I was saying before, if you don't need, if you don't want to, uh, let's say it's the next morning, you know, we had storms during the night while we're sleeping, you notice the wind down in the yard, we could uh, report your information to the Weather Service with our website, uh, NWS Chat. How many people have heard of NWS Chat? Okay, a few. Uh, social media, of course, you can direct, message, uh, direct messages uh, that uh, to us, uh, of course, over, over the phone. This is a DMR uh, footprint for the coverage for the W4LEQ repeater uh, that's down in Cordova. Many of you have seen this. This is a screenshot from the Brandmeister website. Um, the uh, antennas, I think it's 560 feet up, thereabouts, or 590, something like that. It's got good coverage. I can hit it from Arlington, uh, downstairs my house with five watts, and usually get about S9. So uh, one of the advantages of the DMR it, is, uh, you know, and how the digital works, you either get a signal or you don't. But it seems to be when it does work, it's, it's pretty reliable. So just about anywhere in Shelby County here, uh, let's see if I get the, the laser to work. <coughs> so this is this is the 240 loop here. This is the, uh, the 385, 269 loop out here. Of course, this is Fayette County, Tipton, and, and uh, DeSoto, and, and Crittenden. So it's got a good footprint. Um, <coughs> one of the issues with DMR, of course, is the setup, and I had to I had to study quite a bit on the internet to find out <laughs> how, to, how to configure my radio. But once you get it configured, you can hit the uh, hit the repeater from an HG just in a car, just about anywhere in the county. This is the uh, DMR hotspot. Many of you are familiar with this. Um, this is actually the DMR hotspot out of the weather service. So. In the event that the W4 LET repeater is down for some reason, we do have the capability uh, with a, a couple of DMR radios there in our operations area, and we can just talk through that talk group through this. And with the all-star repeater, all-star system, link into this talk group, and of course we can talk to you about them on those repeaters as well. I'll have a list of those repeaters in a, in a slide that's, that's uh, coming up here. So a lot of this, as I said, uh, thanks to the, the work of Michael Knight, KK4 Iowa, he gave me this list of uh, all-star link repeaters in the area that uh, will connect to this uh, NWS Memphis talk group to 31471. So you can see a lot of these are uh, over across the river in Arkansas. We've got a, a pretty good interest there of the Jonesboro Harrisburg area. So, They've got some repeaters that are put up there, and they're pretty excited to be part of this. So um, we're pretty excited to have them on board with the weather service. So he did say that uh, Helena, West Helena area has a small group there too. They like to do the repeaters put up. Again, uh, with DMR, even if you don't have a repeater, if you've got a, a hotspot in your house and an internet connection, you can get on the talk group. I will say one of the one of the issues that, I, that we have come across with the W4 LED repeater. Um, it's a static, uh, as you know, most of you know that the DMR technology, uh, for one frequency, there's two time slots. And the NWS Memphis is a static group on one of those time slots. So that means it's basically configured, that's what it is. It's not going to be pushed off of that time slot. But uh, operators do have the, the option to put on a dynamic talk group onto that same time slot. And that works okay if, if the NWS Memphis talk group's not active. That's great. People have fun with that. 
But sometimes we get weather. We'll have a tornado watch. Uh, we'll have storms out in out of Caribbean County, and we've got a time slot. Someone's got Talk Group 91, you know, the Worldwide Talk Group, hooked up on W. Or a few repeaters, so we've had to you know, issue disconnect codes on that. Um, not too much of a problem. It's, it's pretty easy to, to knock those dynamic top roofs off. But if you have a hot spot, you don't have to deal with that. You, know, you have full control. You can set it to that, that top roof that you're interested in, and, and it's yours. And then when the weather's over, sometimes I put my hot spot over to uh, North America or worldwide to see what's going on, just just for fun. But uh, we're pretty excited and really grateful for Michael Knight and, uh, and others who have helped make this, uh, this analog linking possible. Because we know not everybody cares for DMR. As I said, for, for amateur radio, you kind of take it or leave it. Some people don't want to go through the expense of buying a DMR radio or uh, going through the, you know, trying to figure out the code plug and all that stuff. And, you know, you got a, a, a UHF, VHF, HT, and that works great. You, know, you plug that. Use the all star repeater to get into the talk group. So, we want to make this an open, we don't want to make this a DMR weather net. We want to make this a weather net. However, the technology, whatever the technology is to get in, we want you to have, have that available to you. Now, we do have a monthly uh, Skywar net. Uh, we're getting a name change to just Mid South monthly Skywar net. Uh, DMR, main technology, um, that's the first day of each month at 7 p.m. The one thing I would like to mention here, we do need net control volunteers. So I realize, you know, I've got, I've got two girls and it's, sometimes it's, it's like, I'll get a Google alert on my phone, it's like the net's gonna start in 10 minutes and like I'm in the middle of something, I have got, or I might be at Costco. And, you know, so, Life happens, it gets, you know, people are really busy, so we get that. But what this allows, this net control allows us to, to do each month is, of course, like any other net, work on our, our radio skills, but also test out this all-star link. The folks in Jonesboro that are just coming on board, they get, they get to uh, experience this Skywar net and make sure that their, the linking systems are working properly. So. Uh, that's why we conduct that net each month, and if anybody would like to participate, volunteer, and run that net, you just kind of have to, you know, read the, you don't have to, you know, come up with, the, with it on your own. There, there's text that you can read, protocols, many of you have run nets before. It's just like that, and uh, just contact John here, and uh, we'll, we'll get you fixed up. Okay, going on to the non-radio reporting methods. We have spotter groups and radio groups uh, around our 55 county warning area, like down in Tupelo. We do get reports directly from Tupelo on occasion through DMR. Uh, we have had um, local groups down there say, well, we kind of like to run our own net, and then we'll report what we have, what we get up to you. We'll have a net control that passes, passes that on to the weather service. That's great. Whatever works for them, we're all for that. So how do they get their information to the weather service? There's a couple of ways. Let's say that the net controller down in Tupelo or somewhere says, well, I've got a golf ball size tail report uh, down in Guntown, Mississippi. I need to pass that on. He could call us. He could go into our DMR talk group and, and bring us up and uh, get us a report that way. Hopefully we've got somebody listening at the time that we've got a net activated. Or he could reach us on this technology called NWS Chat. This uses, uh, this is a screenshot of the Pigeon Chat application. This uses uh, XMTP, if you're all familiar with that. It's an open standard chat uh, technology. Weather Service has been using this for, gosh, 10 or 15 years now. The administrative rules on it are pretty tight. They don't just let anybody in on this. Um, you can't say, well, I'm a, I'm a ham radio operator, I'm a weather spotter. Um, that's not going to be enough to get you in. We require those ham radio operators to be recognized net controllers. So we have to have a relationship with them. And so I'm just, 
I brought this slide along just in case y'all heard about NWS Chad. I want to kind of set set the stage, kind of you know, perspective of what that's what that's about. So we've been on NWS Chat for 10 or 15 years. We're going to move to Slack, kind of a more a little more uh, feature full uh, chat program here. Probably I'd say by August. I think we've got some limited testing going on. I think they're going to throw the switch on that in August. So. That will allow that, that net controller down in Tupelo say to take a picture and just post it in chat. Right now we don't have the capability to do that. Someone reports something on chat, uh, well you have to go here to my Facebook page, you'll see a picture of what just happened. You know, that kind of thing. So it's kind of clunky the way it is right now. We do have a severe storm report uh, form on our website. Again, this, this is open to anyone. Um, go to our, our front page here and just hover the mouse over current hazards and this says submit a storm report that will take you to this page here. Basically it's, a, it's an embedded Google form and it's real simple. You just kind of follow it down there. You don't have to leave your name if you don't want to. It's your general location and what time and what you saw. So this would be something to share with you know just anybody that you know if you come across some storm damage. And like I said earlier, it doesn't, have to be, it doesn't have to be in real time or even the same day. You say, hey, I came back to my rental property, I had a tree on my house or something, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and we had these storms last week in the Harrisburg area, and then we can go back and look and correlate that, and it gets put into the storm database. That can be done on this form here. And this form will email us, uh, and I'll have that email address here. Uh, Right here. So it gets sent to this srmag.weather at noaa.gov. So that is an office wide email address that every meteorologist at our office has access to. So if you have anything, that, a question, a report, anything weather related, um, what's the next spotter meeting going to be? Are y'all thinking about doing a fall spotter meeting? That kind of stuff. Those can all go to this. SRMag.weather. Uh, SR at uh, Just use your, you know, go to your own Gmail or whatever your, your email client is and just send us an email there. Obviously, you can direct messages on Facebook and Twitter as well. This is our phone number here 901 544 This is a special number. This is unlisted, so we ask you not to share it with, you know, just anybody. But we did get this out to our emergency managers, our media partners, and our storm spotters. So that number is, is one of the very few numbers that rings directly to our operations floor. So you're not going to get a voice creep. You know, hello, this is the National Weather Service. If you know the party electric, you don't get that. You'll get a forecaster when you call that number. So that's the number we use for, we want to call NWS Little Rock wants to call us, that's the number they use. So uh, that's the number that I would keep filed away. And when you call that number, just say, I'm so and so, I'm a ham radio, I'm a spotter here in Memphis, and I, I'd like to report something. Just use that number. We'd love, love to do that. So while this is a ham radio group here, I just want to emphasize there's multiple ways to get weather to the National Weather Service. So, like I said before, I don't have time to go into a whole lot of uh, uh, storm spotting uh, training, but two weeks from today, there's going to be more than that that you can shake a stick at. I don't know if that's me making that, that, uh, that sound on the microphone or not. But, um, it's at the Lord of Life Lutheran Church uh, down in Germantown, uh, down on Poplar Pike. So that's two weeks from today. That's uh, 7 to 9 p.m. It's one long block east of Kirby Parkway. Yes. In Memphis. Yeah, I apologize. I should have zoomed in on that now. This is a sad street shot. But uh, plug that into the Google Maps or your favorite map application and You'll get there. We normally do spotter meetings uh, twice a year, uh, spring and summer. 
Uh, we get the, the biggest turnout for our spring, uh, spring program. Um, of course, we do get spring just about any time. It seems like, uh, I'm not sure, this, this year we may have gone, we may have gone the entire winter having at least one severe storm event throughout the, you know, our 55 county area. So we don't really get a break. Uh, I came, like I said, I came from Nebraska. We had winter up there. We could kind of shut off that part of our brain for a few, few months, but not, not here in the south. So this is just one of the sample slides from our training. Um, if you go in a couple of weeks, we'll talk about storm features. Like when you see a thunderstorm cloud, what is it that you're looking at? What do these features tell you? What are these, uh, uh, what are these cauliflower like? appearance to the cloud. What does that tell you? That's a fresh updraft. This is an area of growth. This is on the on this side of the updraft here. So when you have an updraft and you get the get the precipitation is uh, suspended aloft in the thunderstorm cloud and start starts to fall down, well that causes a downdraft. Where's the tornado more likely to form? Where do you look for a tornado in the cloud? So this is the kind of information that you're going to get if you go up to the spotter training uh, two weeks from, from today. So whether or not you go to the training, you know, that we have here on the 28th, we do have an online uh, weather spotter steel guide that you can download off the internet. That QR code may be a little bit far away from your phone, but um, we did we did have the, uh, the URL up there at the top of the screen. It's uh, tinyurl.com and S-E-T-R guide. Not case sensitive, so don't worry about the case on that. And I'll put this up here again here in a little bit, so you can write it down if you want. This is more of a, a reference sheet. So we've got, you know, I've got this stick of a limb that just blew off my, my tree. What kind of wind speed would that correspond to? Kind of gives you an idea. This is a reference sheet. Um, you hear the term headaches, size hail. See that on a website report. Well, how big is a headache? You know, you know approximately how big it is, but what's the technical definition? That kind of stuff. So, this is kind of a good thing to have. These are in PDF form, so they print out nicely, and you can just put it in a drawer somewhere. So that's all I have. Like, like I said, my, my goal tonight was to try to get y'all to, to see there's multiple ways to get information to the Weather Service, and would I even be interested in reporting? And what, what is reporting weather to the Weather Service? What does that even mean? And I hope y'all know that we're just interested in anything that you have. You don't have to get your car. You don't have to go out and look for things. You don't have to commit to it. You could be cooking dinner at home, and then you hear something hit the window, a hailstone, and you go out and look at it, and maybe hit up someone on the see if the weather that's active, and report that on there, and then just go on with your evening. That, that makes you a weather spotter. Yeah. Um, are there any questions? Yes, what is the URL of that reporting form you were talking about? Yeah, you bet. Let me go back to that. That'll be a weather.gov slash Memphis. So if you go here, there'll be a link, and I'll go to the, uh, the screenshot here. So there's, you'll see a map similar to this, and you'll just hover over current hazards, and the third one down from there says submit a storm report. There's also a form there you can submit a storm photo. So it's not just a text description. If you have a photo and you want to put that in there, you can do that. Um, and that'll get you to this, this Google form here that you see on the right. So just weather.gov slash Memphis. That'll get you to this page here, and then you just click off that. Any other questions? All right. I, I thank you all for having me here, and uh, if anyone's interested,
Cullen and uh, Mid South Water Net. Dr. John. I got the on April first. <laughs> Thank you so much, Phil. I appreciate it. So, uh,